What's up, everybody? I'm Nick Major, APTV Los Angeles correspondent, coming to you today from Van Nuys, California, where I'm right outside of Hopeless Records. They're home to some fantastic artists like The Used, Taking Back Sunday, The Wonder Years, and The Dangerous Summer, to name a few. They also just marked their 20th anniversary, so let's go see what this place is all about. I'm here with Mallory Jackson. Mallory, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. And Mallory, what exactly do you do here? I speak to you guys on Twitter and Facebook all day long. Um, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And then I also handle press opportunities for our bands and yeah, a lot of good stuff. Perfect, and she's gonna show us around the place a little bit and we're gonna see what, okay. what it's like here at Hopeless Records. This is our front lobby, which is also Brittany, um, our owner and founder's assistant. She sits over here. Hello. How you doing? Welcome to our home. Welcome to this is that. this is a coincidence. I didn't just put this here. I swear. But I I, I saw this this table over here too. Actually, really quick. Look at this. Now that is how a table should look. This is our conference room. It's where all of our meetings take place, where bands come in when we sign them. They. A lot has been ha has happened at this table right here. So oh man. Is, this, is this where all the artists actually come? I mean, majority of them. All of them, but there have been quite a few in here. How are you doing, Good. Lewis? My, I'm Nick. Nice yeah. to meet you. And Lewis, this is the the owner of the company. Yeah. Is that? Tell me a little bit about the history of Hopeless Records. What you guys are hoping to achieve and accomplish at the label, and now that you just reached your 20, <clears throat> 20 year mark, which is pretty amazing. Um, I, I guess I'm getting old. I can't remember what happened in the last 20 years, or it was. Uh, I mean, it was a good 20 years. IPAs. The label started as a dare, actually, by um, the band Guttermouth. I was directing a music video for them. I was actually going to film school at the time. Those guys were between labels, and they wanted to put out a seven inch, and they told me uh, everyone that they know. You know, doesn't wake up till two in the afternoon, and, and I had this video shoot organized, so they trusted me to do it, which was scary because I had uh, no music industry experience, uh, no one in my family in the music industry, uh, no money. So I went and bought a book called How to Run an Independent Record Label, read that, uh, borrowed a thousand dollars from my brother and his friends, and uh, then just decided to keep doing it. It was important to us to do more, so that's why we started SubCity to um, raise awareness and funds for nonprofit organizations and those important causes uh, by uh, connecting the artist's voice, uh, which can be so powerful, to these important causes that they care about. And also, myself and a lot of people at the label at the time were volunteering our time uh, at night and on the weekends, and when you are working at a label, it's 24-7 business, so mm -hmm. it was hard to do both, so we thought, yeah, it'd be fun to be able to combine these two things so while we're working so hard on Hopeless we could also be volunteering our time uh, with nonprofits and that's when the idea came to do Subsidy. Uh, that first year we wanted to bring that same concept to the road and that's when the Take Action Tour started as well. Any word on next year's Take Action Tour? Uh, we're going to be announcing it very soon, it's confirmed. Ooh, nice! And it's, tell me, it's, it's amazing, yes? It is an amazing headliner and, and lineup, a great cause. Uh, last year's was great as well. It was our, actually our second biggest take action ever with the uh, used headlining, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gets Better Project was our uh, benefiting charity. So we've now raised over $2 million for over 50 nonprofit organizations. And wow. it's, not, it's not us. It's really the bands and the fans. You know, We're just the intermediate uh, person and company who make it, you know all the pieces fit together but without the bands and without the fans and you know not none of it's possible thank you again thanks so much for all chatting right. with us man. All right. have a good day okay. let's continue on with our tour of fun hey al is it okay yep. if i say hello to you yeah cool we're coming in i'm the general manager and I've been here since 1998, so I've been here for most of our 20 years, 15 of them. I deal with everything, I mean, I generally manage. So if it's uh, internet, you know, in the office, office uh, operations, to all of our accounting, royalty accounting, all that kind of thing. Uh, and I've got a lot of experience from dealing with a little bit of everything in this company in my years here, from placing ads to, you know, I've done a little bit of everything. But now mostly I'm dealing with kind of more of a CFO type 
role. Someone who's not here today, Betsy, is uh, someone who helps me a great deal with accounting. She does a lot of the you know, collection of uh, information and, and coordinating information. So oh. she isn't here, but she's hugely important as well. We miss you, Betsy. We wish you were here. Yes. Check out the lovely artwork on the wall down here. We're hopeless, some avenged. <laughs> and that is just, that's just amazing. This is where I sit, so. Ooh. Here's where all my magic happens. What's this chalkboard right here, by the way? This is our chalkboard. Basically, anyone that comes in here can write on it. You guys should leave us a little message. We have some great drawings. Um, Driver Friendly did that one up there that says, be careful, buddy. <laughs> I'm not sure who did the Jarabit. I don't even know if that's how you did, pronounce did, it. Is it. Oh, geez, I'm trying to come up with my own name. <laughs> And this is where we have all of our meals if we decide to eat in the office. Our lovely fridge, which I can show you guys something special. This is the cake that you guys sent us. Still have a little bit left. If you want to bite. We're actually probably going to sit down right after this. Anyway. And I think we're going to stuff our faces. It looks kind of gross right now. Gross. It's incredible. That's impossible for cake to look I know, gross. But we kind of devoured it. Here's where we keep a bunch of our merch. Um, we don't actually have all of it in-house anymore. We used to. But yeah, boxes upon boxes of the best stuff you will ever find. Albums. Oh, we for got days. we got some some Sam I am. We got some yeah, used. The used. I mean, everything we've put out, we have a copy. Jeez. Here, so look at this. We have boxes <laughs> and boxes for take, take action. action. Yep. You've got <laughs> shirts. You've got music. You've got hoodies. I, I don't think I'm leaving this place. I don't think I am. Some posters. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. We've got it all. Again, everyone, Mallory Jackson. Yes. Nice meeting Thanks you. so much. Yes, of course. And, and now we're going to go chat with, I think we're going to go chat with uh, Ian for a bit now. All right. I am here with our new friend, Ian Harrison, VP of Marketing here. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yes, of course. And exactly what is a VP of Marketing? It is a frivolous title. Um, I gathered that. To make people feel important. <laughs> I am part of the team here and I head up marketing basically. Um, but we're a small group here and we all do lots of stuff. So what are some uh, upcoming releases and cause new year's coming up, you guys have a few stuff coming out that you've been, uh, yeah, we have a busy year next year. Next year we have neck deep, which is one of our newest bands. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're the in crowd taking back Sunday, big record for us. New signing, uh, Bayside also new to label on that, by the way, that's Thank awesome. You. Mm -hmm. We're very excited about, uh, taking back Sunday and Bayside. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Addition to the label. And you guys all time low came back. Um, and we have some more surprises for next year, which I think, uh, 2014 sounds like it's gonna be a good year big, big year for us the first half will be the busiest uh, six months we've ever had Ian Harrison everybody VP of marketing over here at hopeless records Ian thanks so much for talking thank to you. us thank you yes and I will be seeing you tomorrow yes yeah. at the event so Absolutely. any idea what we can expect at the 20th anniversary event we have kind of a weird event planned so I hope uh, I hope you guys all like it <laughs> you hope we like it weird I'm in I love it <laughs> I love weird The time has finally come. I am in Hollywood, California at the Troubadour nightclub where some of the biggest names in the music industry have performed, including Guns N' Roses and some of their very first shows. But tonight, we are celebrating 20 years for Hopeless Records, and I hear it's a pretty sweet party going on in there. I'm stoked. I'm so excited I can't take it anymore, so let's get inside. <laughs> I'm here with Jack from All Time Low and Marky from Glamour the from the Ramones. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, man. Pretty good. Very good. Now, you guys having a great time at this outing. And as for you, I wanted to get some insight what you think about Hopeless Records. You guys have been with them before. You guys are back with them again. Yeah, man. Hopeless is awesome, dude. They're really family oriented, you know, which I like. Mm -hmm. So, like, everyone is family. Everyone kind of, every band on their label gets a lot of attention. Which is really rare, you know. And does that set them apart from other labels? Is that why? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we went back to Hopeless because we knew on Hopeless we're gonna get the attention we, we wanted. Totally. And those yeah. guys like support. Those guys. I mean, we watch it firsthand. The the type of um, support they give to their artists and they're they're our favorite label to work with. And I know like you guys and us yeah. have been close for so long and working with a Hopeless family, it's like an umbrella of. Friends. Friends. Like a friend, oh, umbrella. Friends. friend umbrella. One big family. I like it. Yeah. Everyone I'm meeting, it feels like it's just a huge Bella. family here tonight, yeah, and I love under it. My from Bella. Bella. Under my umbrella. Under my umbrella. 
<laughs> so, and is that, do you think that's important for a record label to survive for 20 years, especially an independent label? Do you think having that kind of close family knit, like, feel is one of the important things? Yeah, if you can keep your acts around like that long, you know what I mean, like, and not, and like, have them not go somewhere else, I mean, that's a really, it's a hard thing to do, so they're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, right. I think, I think uh, real fans recognize a real thing when they see it, and they know that this label is very passionate, and they're going to attract a type of band that's a real band, and a real a real fan base has real bands that they follow, and real bands are signed to real labels, and Hopeless is one of those real labels. That, Hopeless isn't about gimmicks, you know, just yeah. about good bands who care about their fans, and that's it, really, and it works. And any good memories in the last many years you guys have all been in that family? Yeah, I mean, we've had a, a lot of memories with Hopeless, you know, like, they came to all our earlier photo shoots where we're in our underwear, and they're like, what Very you, attractive, by the like, way. They're like, what are you doing? And we're like, no, no, no. It's cool, believe me. It's it's cool. It really, People I, will like this, and they're like, "You're crazy," but it works. So I still have a photo of you deep throating a banana in our uh, my yeah. mom's basement, our first office. It's still, <laughs> yeah, you guys are all the parents love that picture, man. Uh, they weird. do. My mom, my mom loves you. you know <laughs> She's oh. a sweet lady. She, thank you. She's a sweet lady. She might watch this. So <laughs> my mom is a sweet lady. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm glad Marky's mom's a sweet lady. Everybody, again, and then Marky, that's from Glamour Kills clothing yeah. again. Nice to meet you. Yes. Jack from All Time Low. Thanks for talking yeah. to us tonight, you guys. Sure now get back out there. Get your drink on. Get your lick on. Get your, <laughs> geez, I don't even know what's going on here anymore. I, I love but, him. I lick on, man. We'll get our licks on later. Don't lick him. Lick her. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, who's he talking about? What's he saying? <laughs> but you know what, guys? Get it, liquor. Oh. Liquor? Liquor? Lick, liquor? 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 We could just do this all night. We'll just liquor. be good. Yeah. Back and forth. We're going to lick each other, but not on camera. That costs extra. We charge it more is, for we that. Charge more for that. We do. Two uh, Miller lights. Two Miller lights. Two Miller lights. Yeah. You know what? I hear it's an open bar, so this is going to be very easy for oh, yeah. me to do. But hey, guys, have a great night. Thanks so much for talking again, Marky, Jack. Have a fantastic night. I'm here with Kevin Lyman, of course, founder of Warped Tour. How are you doing today? I don't know. Happy holidays, Alt Press. Hey, Mike. Hey, Norman. Happy holidays. And Don back there in uh, lovely Cleveland right now. I'm sure you guys are. Uh, Getting suntan back there these days, yes. Good to see you guys. So, at Warp Tour, you uh, you have many bands on that that come from labels, independent labels like Hopeless. And so, how do you think? How does it feel to know that Hopeless Records they've been around for 20 years now? How does it feel to be part of this event tonight? And how have you seen this company grow over the last two decades? I mean, it's it's kind of like one of those things. We've kind of all grown together, you know. I mean, Warp Tour and the independent music scene is, you know, we talk about struggles in the music scene, but actually, it's strong in the indie scene and. And uh, companies like Hopeless that have now been around 20 years, you know, I mean, with a name like Hopeless, you know, you know, maybe when they named themselves, it was a predecessor of the major labels. But uh, as an indie label, uh, Hopeless is, is doing fantastic. And it's fun to kind of get in early with the bands, you know, uh, that's fun. We I can sit with uh, Lewis and, and we uh, in October and September and talk about just talk about music again, you know, and it's not about uh, radio singles or or things like this. how we're going to develop artists and uh, being just part of that process for me is really cool. And what do you see for the future of independent labels? Are they going to rival the major labels pretty soon or if they're not uh, already? I mean I, I mean, I wouldn't even say rival the major labels. I, I, I don't think the major label model works for the majority of the artists, absolutely, you know. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at it, you know, major label artists, you know, Beyonce last night, you know, she went indie on everyone. That was a complete indie move right there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's that, I don't think there's that competition amongst those labels anymore. It's uh, it's just, a, it's it's a process. And the nice thing is it's, it's realistic expectations. And I think being on an indie label, artists go into it with those expectations. And, and everyone work, can work together uh, and usually make a nice little career out of it. And you guys are part of that whole process too. I mean, that's what's really cool right now. You've got the indie labels, you've got alt press, uh, you've got tours like Warp Tour and, and some of the stuff out there, and it all works together. Yeah, and you guys just finished up the, uh, well, I guess you've been doing Warp Tours all over lately, actually. Yeah. You've had Warp Tour in Australia, Warp yeah. Tour over in the UK. Yeah, we were over in the UK and uh, Switzerland, Vienna, and, you know, all over, and then Australia to go back there again. And I think it just ties together, you know, and, and if you look at the people who played at those shows, they were all they were independent artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting together and playing for more fans, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin Lyman, again. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks so much for chatting. I'll see you around, you. okay? Very nice. nice Absolutely. To meet you. I'm here with Jesse, and Jesse, tell us why you're here tonight, actually. I'm here to honor Louis Posen, 
on behalf of the Foundation Fighting Blindness and Hopeless Records. I have a generative eye disease, retinitis pigmentosa, which Lewis also has. And he has been such an amazing mentor and inspiration to me, and I'm so glad to be here tonight to support him. So talk to me a little bit about your charitable side or stuff that you've been working on. Uh, well, we work very closely with the Foundation Fighting Blindness. We do a lot of charity events for um, Vision Walk. We're a really, really big supporters of that. And, I mean, Lewis in general has been such an inspiration for me to be more charitable because he's, like, such a charitable mm -hmm. guy. So it's like... He's a big inspiration, and I love being a part of the foundation and raising money. And it it just gives you such like a selfish, I mean, selfless feeling to just selfish. Help. Yeah, right. Selfish feeling to just raise all this money for other people. But <laughs> nothing no, I mean, more I love selfish it. than raising money for others. I know, right? Well, it's kind of for me, so it's maybe it's a little selfish. Maybe that was right. Like <laughs> it's the benefit people affected like you. And thank you so much for coming out tonight and for speaking. By the way, yeah. you spoke earlier. I did. And it was. That was amazing, by the way. You did really? a great job. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to, like, vomit all over the stage. I was so nervous. <laughs> no, you did fantastic. So thank you again for coming out tonight. Hope you're having a great time. And I thanks am. for chatting. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> all right. I am here with Cody from The Dangerous Summer. How you doing, Cody? I'm good. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, your band, you guys have been on the label pretty much for your entire existence, yes? Pretty much, yeah. And so what's what's it been like working with Hopeless as a, as a band? It's been good. Um, we've had a lot of ups and downs, and it's, and it's nice to have like someone there the whole time. And they've always been there. We've re-signed with them like after our last album, so we're, we're gonna have a, I guess, a whole new future with them too. That's perfect. So, what keeps you coming back to these guys? Why do you stay with them? Um, you just hear so many horror stories with other labels, and we've never had one, so we might as well stay where it's been gold. And they've always like treated us well. They've taken us out. They've bought us meals, drinks, whatever. They've taken us to random places like shooting ranges and all that fun stuff so now that sounds like a label yeah. to stay a part of it's definitely a family so it's <laughs> yeah I, I, I was just there and it seems like a big family you all see, all seems like you all get along great it's definitely fun all right cody thanks so much cody again from the dangerous summer it's been a pleasure and enjoy the rest of your night I'm here with Charlie Saxton. Charlie, how you doing? Great. How are you feeling? I am feeling fantastic. What about you? It's a great party going on? Yeah, this is bumping. This is a bumping party, I must say. It is. I will agree with that. And also, I wanted to say some people may recognize you yes. as the lone wolf yes. in the Melrose Diner video yes. from the Wonder Years. You would be correct. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, uh, I've been friends with the Wonder Years for a really long time. You know, we're both in Philadelphia. And... Uh, I actually became friends with them because I wore one of their t-shirts on a red carpet that I did once and I ended up on a worst dress blog for like the week of that week that I wore on the red carpet or whatever and so I sent it to their MySpace and Soupy immediately wrote back and was just like this is amazing and he was just like what are you doing next weekend we're recording a new album called The Upsides you want to record gang vocals on it and I was like sure why not and that was literally the first time I met them in person and we've been friends ever since and so we just kept in contact and then uh, they were like we're shooting this music video do you want to be a part of it and I said absolutely because you know we're, uh, we're all friends of professional wrestling me and the Wonder Years and uh, John James Ryan their tour manager so uh, to be a part of the, the action was just awesome favorite wrestler um, independent or WWE like you gotta give me an independent and a WWE let's favorite, get it uh, independent wrestler is Kevin Steen and favorite WWE wrestler currently, I'll have to say CM Punk. CM Punk, he is having a good career right now. Great guy, you can't not love the guy. <laughs> so who are some other artists that you're uh, buddies with? You know a few other hopeless yeah, artists? Yeah, yeah, I'm friends with The Wonder Is, and I'm also friends with uh, Driver Friendly, they're really good friends of mine. They uh, did a film that I was in like six years ago called Band Slam, which is also- Check it out. Check it out, it's a great, it's a great movie. Uh, but that, that was so random because I found them on like pure volume in like the summer of 2003, randomly one year. And uh, Band Slam is a movie about like a group of musicians. And uh, during one of the rehearsals, these uh, horn players showed up, and it was the horn players from Driver Friendly. And I was like, "Are you Driver Friendly?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And I was like, "This is amazing. This is cool." And then another friendship sprung. And then another friendship sprung. I like it. And we shot a movie together. Jeez, you're just all getting all into the band's friend business and getting in all their videos? I'm all about friends and pop punk and happiness, you know. It's pretty awesome to be here tonight. Tell me how it feels for you. Well, I was definitely a fan first before I was a friend with not only any of the artists, but just the record label in general. I remember 
getting packages from them when I was like 12 years old, getting Adam and his package and mustard plug CDs. And, you know, so just to, you know, be here now for the 20th year anniversary celebration, it's crazy. It's awesome. It's cool to see an independent record label still kind of like thriving and still kind of, you know, being very prevalent and still very much a part of the scene and still still uh, releasing really good content. I feel like a lot of the bands that this record label has are some of the best that are out there currently. So oh, yeah, they, did, they just picked up, like, Taking Back Sunday, yeah, for example. Sunday and Bayside and The Wonder Years and Driver Friendly. So, you know, nothing but good things. To another 20 years. Yes, to many more. Yeah. To 20 hundred million more years. I like that number. <laughs> All right, Charlie, thanks so much for talking to us. Oh, now go enjoy the rest Absolutely. of your night. All right, everybody, that's it for us at the 20th anniversary event for Hopeless Records. And from all of us at Alternative Press, congratulations, Hopeless Records, on 20 years of awesome CDs and awesome bands. I'm Nick Major, APTV Los Angeles correspondent. See you next time.